Okay, here we go. We're on the second video of this series. Um, you can see our repository here that we have just to get ignored and read me in it so far. What we're going to do in this video is generate some Python code uh, and and write the doc strings for it in our example, in our just for our Python code example. I'm going to do this with PyCharm. Uh, PyCharm is really nice when we get to doing some of the the website writing, uh, you could edit those files in PyCharm also. You could use any text editor or IDE you would like, um, but this is how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to create a new project in PyCharm. It's going to be a pure Python project. Uh, I'm going to navigate to our repository, which if I can find it here, I don't particularly like there we go, C, it's in here, uh, code, examples, Sphinx. And I'm just gonna create it right in this very same folder, click OK. I have to choose my interpreter. Uh, use the same one that I installed Sphinx on. This is gonna take a well, while. PyCharm does a, does a lot of stuff behind the scenes, uh, and it's kind of slow on this, this desktop here. And so this is just saying it's not an empty directory, uh, and I can just say yes, I'll create the project from existing resources, and that's totally fine. Okay, here we go. And here's my PyCharm project. Close that. So I can right click here, once it gets all loaded up, I guess. Right click, new, Python file, and I'm gonna call this example one. Okay. And I can add it to source control here. I'm going to do no, just so I can show you how to do this on the command line. Okay, now what we can do is start writing some Python code. Um, first, I want to go into uh, our settings. We can set up our doc strings in a few different ways, and I'll explain exactly what a doc string is here in a minute. Um, Let's see. There's a, there's a way here we can set up our doc strings and I'm forgetting exactly where it is. Maybe it might be under tools here. Python external documentation, nope, that's not it. Okay, here we go. So if you go to Python integrated tools, you see the stock strings here, there are a few options. So we have plain, epitext, restructured text, which is the, the default, which is just fine to use. Um, there's also Google. This, and I, what I'll do is I'll show you a couple different, a couple different ones of these and we, you can get an idea for how this works. So I'll keep it on restructured text for now. We'll come back and change this. Just click OK. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a function. Uh, no. So I'm going to write a function called function1. And it's going to have arguments, argument1, argument2. And it's going to return none. And what I'm going to do is arg1 equals arg2. And then what we'll do here is I'll go return argument1. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, if I hit enter after this, and I hit double quote three times and enter, you can see that I have uh, some things automatically come up here with the parameters and the return. 
So right here, I'm gonna write a function description. This function takes two arguments, does math that doesn't matter. Oh, let's see, takes two arguments, sets the first to equal the second, then returns the new first argument. Pointless is what it is, but that's okay. Okay, and then I've got this parameter, argument one, um, some value. And then I have this other one, argument two, another value. Uh, and then I have return, it's gonna return argument one. Okay, um, white space does matter. I can't remember, I think you need to hit return after the parameter section. You need to hit return after you write the function description. I don't think you need to return here. You'll know when you auto document the code, which we'll get to in the, in the next video. Um, and so you can see we have this doc string here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go back in, go back into settings, tools, integrate. So we're going to change this to uh, Google. Okay, and now func2, we'll just do the exact same function, actually. And then arg1 equals arg2, return arg1. Okay, so we do the same thing. Uh, the double quotes three times, hit enter. And you can see that it's done things a little differently here, right? I still have a spot for a function description. I have these arguments. And I have my returns. But you can see that it has these as arguments and these as returns and this has return, you know, and it's, it's formatted a little bit differently. But these will also produce things a little differently in the documentation. Uh, you can go and look that up somewhere else. But that's just so you're aware of how to change these in PyCharm so you can take care of it automatically. Um, I'm just going to use this default, the restructured text. Um, it doesn't matter what you use, it's kind of a personal preference. Um, so I'm going to get rid of this one. I'm going to go back in to settings, change this back to restructured text, click OK, and I'm going to write another function. Um, this one's going to take no arguments and return none. Function with no arguments uh, returns none return none okay and let's just leave it at that for now actually um, that's enough to get you started on this uh, and we'll just leave it at that and let's go and update our repository. So first, let me show you what, what we have here again. So you can see we have this .idea folder and that's added by PyCharm that contains the project settings. Um, and then we've added, added this example 1.py. Let's open um, our git bash back up. And if we type git status, we can see that we have uh, this directory and this um, file that has not yet been added to the repository. Before I do anything, I want to ignore the .idea folder 
uh, it doesn't contain anything to search for the project. It's just local settings for, for PyCharm. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add that to my git ignore. Um, I think I do it. I always forget how to add directories, but I think it's like this. Um, okay. Add that there. And then we can type git status again. You can see the git ignore has been modified. Example one is new and you can also see that the, um, the idea folder does not show up anymore it's because they added it to the git ignore and so let's uh git add we'll add all because we have to add this new file and then git commit all message and adding functions to document okay And then we'll push this up. And the username and password. And there we go. And let's just go uh, check out our repository. Show that new files up there. Boom, there it is, there's our file document. Okay, so a little longer video. We didn't do a whole lot, but I kind of took you through how, how those stock strings work. Um, and so now we know how to do that and we can start working on the Sphinx documentation in the next video.